Yo, YouTube, it is the one and only Jared the Analyst, and yes, I'm finally back with another video. Please, please forgive me, y'all. I'm so sorry. I know it's been a while since I made my last video. I'm just trying my best to be as consistent with this channel as I possibly can, but hey, we here now. Um, but yeah, let's do it. So last year, I made a video detailing the downfall of the Boston Celtics and how they've fallen from the promise they had shown back in 2018. Now at that time of that video, Kemba Walker was still on their team, Brad Stevens was still their coach, and it looked as if Jason Tatum might not have been able to take the leap that most of us were expecting from him. Thankfully though, Boston would end up proving myself and a lot of people wrong in the 2021-2022 season, and they would reach the NBA Finals for the first time since 2010. And at the time of this recording, which ironically happens to be the halfway point of the NBA season, the Boston Celtics are currently 30 and 12, which is not only the best record in the Eastern Conference, but also the best record in the entire NBA. And by the title of this video, I'm going to explain to you four reasons why I think that the Boston Celtics will end up winning the 2023 NBA championship. The first point I'm going to highlight is their defense. Now defensively, the Boston Celtics have one of the deepest teams in the NBA, as unlike a lot of other teams in the league, they don't just overly depend on one or two players to carry their entire defense. Collectively, this team has defensive weapons at every position that you would want. They have the reigning defensive player of the year on their team and Marcus Smart as their point of attack defender. Then on the wings, you have Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown who are able to also play point of attack on the wings while also contributing to the team defense, and Grant Williams, who's quick enough to keep up with the quicker and more agile wings like Paul George and Kevin Durant, while also being strong enough to guard bigger forwards like Giannis and Anthony Davis. Then of course, you have the men in the middle in Al Horford and Robert Williams, who in Al Horford is much like Grant Williams, where he's able to switch onto smaller guards and forwards when need be, while also being able to hold his own against bigger matchups and in Robert Williams, who even though he was dealing with a knee injury in the finals this past year, was still able to protect the rim and give you around three blocks a game. So as you see, when it comes to defense, Boston matches up very well against pretty much every contender in the NBA, which gives me the confidence that they can indeed make it happen this year. And for my next point, we have depth, which is something that I alluded to in my last point, but I now want to focus more on the offensive side of the floor. See, throughout NBA history, one characteristic that a championship team has had has not only been their defense, but it's also been the depth of the roster. And being able to have a solid 8-9 to nine man rotation is a luxury that not a lot of teams are able to have. Boston, however, has this ability, as you have guys like Marcus Smart, who I just stated is the reigning defensive player of the year, while also being a serviceable lead guard and now a solid floor spacer. Then of course you have Tatum and Brown who are the centerpieces of your team. Then you have Grant Williams who is again not only a great defender but also a great floor spacer as he's currently shooting 41% from the three point line. And Al Horford who again is not only a great defender but is a quality floor spacer as he's also shooting above 40% from the three point line. Then you have the bench, which got a huge boost this year as the Celtics were able to pick up Malcolm Brogdon, who is easily one of the most underrated players in the NBA, as he's not only another great floor spacer, but he's another shot creator and playmaker that's able to man the offense while Tatum and Brown are on the bench. Then you have Derek White, who, wouldn't you know, is another great floor spacer, Robert Williams, who's a viable lob threat off the pick and roll, and Blake Griffin, who, granted, is not what he used to be, but is still a serviceable backup big, being able to grab around 45 rebounds. And not only do the Celtics have a deep team, they're able to switch and utilize another key aspect of their depth, which is their versatility. In today's NBA, being able to have multiple positions who are able to switch and play the ball handler on the pick and roll is one of the most important aspects of the game of basketball. Few teams have been able to bring this skill to life, however, whether it was the Miami Heat, the Golden State Warriors, 
the Milwaukee Bucks, and now the Boston Celtics. These teams have made the defensive identity known with their versatility. See, one thing about Boston that was highlighted in their series against the Nets last year was how easily they were willing and able to switch onto perimeter players and have multiple players who could guard multiple positions. This was very pivotal in them neutralizing Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving and being able to make the deep postseason run that they'd end up making. Not only that, but on the offensive end, not only having guys like Tatum and Brown to create offense, but having shooters and floor spacers around them, another shot creator and shooter in Malcolm Brogdon, and a lob threat presence in Robert Williams gives this team multiple options on the offensive and even better options on the defensive end. But even with all that being said, the main reason why I have Boston winning the championship this year is because of two players. So last year when I made that video on the Celtics, the main point that I highlighted about why I was so frustrated about the makeup of that team was because Danny Ainge was trying to find a replacement for Kyrie Irving when it had been made clear to him that he did not need to do that. Because in 2018, Tatum and Brown gave you more than enough evidence that as a rookie and sophomore duo, they'd be able to lead this team into deep postseason runs without Kyrie Irving or Gordon Hayward available. And my main point was just to give both of them the keys to the offense. And what do you know? The minute that the Celtics did in fact give them the keys, they make the NBA Finals. Now, I felt like last year might have been peak Jason Tatum that we would have been getting for the next couple of years, as his final performance really wasn't all that great, and I didn't really see much improvement that would lead me to believe that he was heading in the right direction. However, he has turned up his play and consistency to another level this year, becoming a legitimate MVP candidate and becoming the top five player that many people knew that he had the potential to be. Then in terms of Jalen Brown, He's also taken another leap this year while giving you 27 points and 7 rebounds, shooting 50% from the field and 80% from the free throw line, and is a second option in the NBA that few teams in the league can say that they have the luxury of having. Not only that, but as we know, both Tatum and Brown are both quality defenders and are more than capable of guarding the best wings in the NBA today. And with all that being said, these are the four reasons that I believe that the Boston Celtics will end up winning the 2023 NBA championship due to them having an elite defense, a deep roster filled with versatile players, and the number one offense in the lead led by two young star players, which are characteristics that have made up every championship team in NBA history. And with all that being said, I thank you guys for all joining me. Again, please forgive me for the long sabbatical that I took but I'm trying to get back on I'm trying to make more videos. I plan on making a Jokic video for you guys in the next video about Jokic potentially being uh, a back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back MVP. So be on the lookout for that. Follow my socials, at Jared the Analyst on Instagram, at Analyst the Jared on Twitter. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.